Here we have Anne Broadbridge uh, as our speaker for uh, today's session. Anne is from Way to Wellness. It's from Newcastle upon Tyne, United Kingdom. Anne will be presenting her material. Uh, the title is Developing Sustainable Maternal Mental Health Support Through Collaborations. So Ang is project manager for the Maternal Mental Health Services Project with 15 years of experience leading health and care project. She oversees the delivery of the program of work, engagement with the health and care system, learning development and evaluation. Previously, Ang was peer research lead at the Young Foundation, growing their peer research strategy. Ang is driven by working collaboratively and passionate about learning and research that shines a light on the, on the needs of people in our communities and the capacity and assets in communities to prototype innovative solutions. So, okay, without further ado, I'll hand over the stage to our speaker. Ang, are you here with us? I am. Thank you so much for having me here. Okay, today. okay. The time is your Ang. Oh, thank you. And happy International Day of the Midwife, everybody. Thank you very much for having me here today. I just wanted to start by acknowledging um, my colleague, Rachel MacDonald, who is named alongside these slides. Rachel is unwell today and can't be here, but just wanted to acknowledge her, her really vital role in this programme of work. Next slide, please. So today I'm going to be sharing learning from four prototypes in the northeast of England, where We've been developing new maternal mental health supports through collaboration with the voluntary sector and with statutory services, with some key indicators around building sustainability. And this is really important because we know that one in five mums will experience a maternal mental health challenge in the postnatal period. And we also know from research that 70% of mums will underplay. So we still have a lot of work to do around stigma around maternal mental health and, and hopefully some of the things that I will share today will give some indicators around how we've been trying to do that in the northeast of England. Next slide, please. So this diagram represents the, the NHS, the National Health Service Perinatal Mental Health Pathway. The NHS long term plan set out a name to increase access around maternal mental health supports to at least 66,000 women. And the portion of the pathway that I'm going to be talking about today is this kind of pale blue triangle here on the left around the voluntary and community sector role around maternal and mental health and also peer support. And as we see in these yellow um, circles here, this work has been around understanding barriers to access to maternal and mental health support around addressing disparities and also around ensuring that we really hear and listen to women's voices and listen to women and families' experiences around maternal mental health to make a positive change. Next slide, please. So the project that I'm going to talk about today, the funding for that work came in through our integrated care system in the North East and North Cumbria, and that funding came to Ways to Wellness, and we then dispersed that funding to four voluntary sector or charitable organisations working across the North East and North Cumbria. And the four areas that we worked in were Sunderland, North Eastside and North Cumbria. That funding came in through a successful North East and North Cumbria integrated care system and the perinatal mental health clinical network. As new maternal mental health clinical services were getting off the ground, so it was identified that women would receive clinical service if they had moderate to severe needs. The project that I'm talking about today is around working with women with mild to moderate mental health needs during what we call the first thousand and one days. So that period from pregnancy and right the way up until baby's second birthday. Next slide, please. So the work that I'm presenting today, I wanted to share some, some headlines, really. What we've identified is the social prescribing link work project has been low cost. It's been a really high value preventive support. It appears to be reducing demand in the health and care system. We've done a range of interviews with clinical services who've told us that the, the new voluntary sector service really complements that clinical work. It's addressing health inequalities, it's addressing issues for ethnically minoritised communities and the social determinants of health 
and we've identified benefits both for mum and for infant, but also for the wider family unit too. Um, the funding for this work came in to support mums primarily, maternal mental health support, but we were also quite often asked around the mental health needs of fathers and partners during that time too. So we've been doing some work um, slightly aside of the maternal mental health delivery, really to understand the impacts on fathers and partners during the perinatal period too. I think one of the things that we found is that this work being based in the voluntary sector has multiple benefits. So our interim evaluation highlighted that clinicians really valued the flexibility and responsiveness of the service. And also, I think going back to that, the, the stat that I shared at the beginning there, around 70% of women underplaying their needs, women reported feeling better able to be open about their needs someone from a community sector organisation rather than from a statutory service. So I think that's been one of the real benefits of this service being based in the voluntary and community sector, that women tell us that they feel better able to be open about their needs and, and better be able to, to take up support within their community and build a, a bigger kind of community network for themselves. And we've also seen some demand added value. So the prototypes have been leveraging additional funding and resource our voluntary and community sector workers were really well supported to identify gaps within their communities where we've been able to set up some new peer support groups and support some additional peer support to happen so that mums can come together and share their experiences and finally the prototypes are generative so our clinicians that we work alongside tell us that they really value being able to work alongside voluntary sector staff who who just know so much more about what's available within the community. So that might be food banks, baby banks, um, a wide range of community supports that perhaps they weren't previously aware of. So the prototypes have been really generative and are building a better community of support around mums. Next slide, please. Just to say a little bit about how, how we've been working with this work, we'd developed a set of design principles. So we've been prototyping and not piloting. And that feels really important because prototyping is much more of an active process. It's been really focused on rapid test and learn, um, both working alongside women and also the providers. It was about understanding our local context in each of the four building on existing assets. So starting with some mapping of those assets and being able to explore gaps and opportunities for new peer support groups and services to get off the ground. We've connected really widely across the local system. The voluntary and community sector workers, the link workers that we've supported to develop through these services, um, they, they really value that opportunity for multidisciplinary team working alongside midwives and health visitors and other healthcare professionals. And I think they're a really valued part of that team. We certainly are now seeing those green shoots around the services being really integrated alongside clinical supports. It's been about challenging existing ways of doing things that get sometimes in the way of collaborative approaches and um, bringing people together to explore a really wide and diverse range of mums needs. So we've brought people together in the community through the project to look at the very distinct support needs of young mums, for example or needs around maternal mental health in rural and remote communities. And I'll say a little bit more about that later. We've also built a really supportive learning community approach. And again, I've got a couple of slides later where I'll share a little bit more of the detail around how we've worked with women to really build and support our learning around what matters to them around their maternal mental health. And finally, capturing impact through stories and numbers and outcome measures as a route to sustainability. We would really like to see this work able to, to continue and to build and to grow. And a really big part of that is ensuring that women could come together and share their experiences with each other and with us. Next slide, please. But just to, to delve a bit more into what we've been doing, we've been prototyping social prescribing link work um, in maternity and alongside mental health services during the perinatal period. Link work is all about what matters to me. So it's about the mum at the centre, 
working with her link worker to co-create a plan. So they're exploring her needs and her goals. And those needs might be around um, social needs. It might be that she's very isolated and would like some support to connect to some really positive and new things within her community. It may be that the family are experiencing financial challenges and need some really practical support, either around budgeting or to connect supports that can help around financial support and potentially maximising benefits and exploring all of the things that the family might be entitled to take forward in terms of support. It might be really practical things around wanting to get back to some physical exercise and activity and either not knowing where to start with that, not knowing what's available in the community, or to build some motivation to make some of those changes. The link worker and mum will then work together to co-create to co-create a plan. So how are they going to do that together? And then the link worker will motivate and support the mum to engage with community assets, working towards change where that's something that the mum has identified that she wants. And then together we work with a framework called the Mother and Baby Outcome Store. So this is a evidence-based measure around improvements in mental health, well-being and feelings about baby and family, so exploring um, family and relationships and also the impact of, of working alongside the link worker on mum's bond with baby too. We really like working with this kind of assessment tool. It's less about assessment and much more about a conversation with the mum and then having the opportunity after we've worked together for a period of time to come back together and explore how things have changed. You know, are things moving for the better? Are things are things becoming better and mum have a better support network around her or do we need to make some changes to that plan so that more positive changes can happen moving forward next slide please so we have link workers working in four areas of the northeastern north cumbria it's a non-clinical support so it's based within the sector but really complements support from health and care practitioners it's about helping mothers to find solutions to their current issues, more effective ways of managing their emotional and mental well-being. I said earlier, we developed this service in tandem with clinical maternal mental health services. So we work with mild to moderate mental health needs during the first 1,001 days, so through pregnancy and up to baby second project up, we were very much concerned with looking at health inequalities so each of our four prototypes is set up to work with the needs of their local community. So, for example, in Middlesbrough in the northeast, we have a project that has set up um, a new local Sakina project, which works with mums who come from um, minoritised communities. And that approach around what matters to me. So it's about empowering mums and families to take control of their mental health and well-being. It's about promoting recovery that focus on what matters to me. So the mum at the centre of all of that and a very person-centred approach and way of working. Connecting to local assets. So connecting to those really strong community supports that perhaps mums weren't previously aware of. It's about taking time to take a really holistic approach to health and wellbeing. And sometimes we receive referrals from midwives or from health visitors or from health practitioners and we receive the referral as a particular need that's identified, but actually through conversation with the mum, the thing that she identifies that's really important for her can sometimes be quite different. So I think there's a real value in the community-based link, that time to get to know a mother and get have that time to get to know the family, sometimes over a sustained period of time, so that we can really understand what, what are the real challenges and what are the things that are important for this family moving forward. And those things might be quite different from the things that healthcare practitioners might identify. That stickability. So stickability is about long-term support. It's about having a, a link worker that will be by mum's side for a period of time that can quite often be longer term support than some of our health sector colleagues have the time to be able to provide. And then on the right side of the screen here, we see some of the, um, the more detail around kind of criteria for the work. So referrals to this project, midwifery, do health visiting through our general practice, GPs, 
through perinatal and community mental health. We also receive referrals from the voluntary sector organisations. And in some cases, mums can self-refer to the service if they identify that they have a maternal mental health need. We tend to work with women for 14 to 20 weeks. It's a flexible service. It can be longer term. Some women have stayed with the service for as long as nine months or 12 months because they've really needed that sustained support around their maternal mental health. And I think it's fair to say that sometimes the more complex cases that we work with need this additional time. And then in terms of training for the link workers, as we were getting this work set up, we it, these are really unique roles. They were new roles that hadn't been piloted before. So we'd identified a range of training needs. And one of the things that we put in place was some training from an NHS organisation, the Tavistock and Portman, who offer an introduction to perinatal mental health illnesses. So this was 20 hours of continuous professional development training that the link workers could access alongside a range of other training that we've, we've really bolted on from organisations like the Birth Trauma Association and the Association for Postpartum Psychosis, so that we really felt that we had a, you know, a new team of voluntary sector workers who had access to a really wide range and evidence base of evidence-based learning. Next slide, please. So this is a learning project and our approach to learning has very much been about getting alongside mums and supporting them to, to share their experiences in a really wide range of different ways. We connect to our local maternity voices partnerships. So here in the UK, each hospital trust has a maternity voice partnership, which is a lay partnership of health professionals and women with experience of using maternity services who come together to activities to, to make things better. It's a quality improvement approach, I suppose. And our approach to learning has been about working alongside those partnerships and, and also working with women who perhaps wouldn't ordinarily engage with those types of partnerships and opportunities to really explore this mosaic of maternal mental health factors and I think one of the reasons that we have these little question marks in this mosaic is that this is an iterative piece of work. We're growing our understanding around maternal mental health. So we've started to, to, to look at, you know, how do these issues tessellate for women? How do they come together for women and families? And what are their experiences? Um, and the prototypes have been very much designed to respond to material disadvantage and to support women experiencing complex social factors. So we've been working really hard to understand what are the needs of women in more rural settings and communities where they're rurally isolated um, or perhaps live in very remote communities. How does that differ from the experiences of younger mums, mums from ethnic, uh, diverse ethnic communities? How does that differ from the experiences of mums who experience neurodiversity? So we've really tried hard to, through that approach to learning, link workers together once a month to explore the kind of issues and challenges that they see in their workforce um, and their work day to day and how that comes together with the issues that women are telling us are really important in their communities to develop this mosaic of maternal mental health factors. Next slide. So what we've learned I think one of the really key things we've learned is that we are working with the right women. So 85% of women that we work with have three or more support needs and 43% have five or more support needs. And these support needs really tell us a picture around health inequalities and complexity. They include women who are experiencing current or historic domestic abuse, women who use drugs and alcohol, women who are perhaps supporting a partner who uses drugs or alcohol, supporting older siblings with disabilities, women who are care leavers or are care experienced, and women who are at risk of homelessness. So I think this side really speaks to that the community link workers have been working with. And our prototypes have supported 345 women, so we're roughly supporting 3% of local births with these new services. Next slide. Thinking about that mother and baby outcome star, the primary outcomes that we're seeing for women are an improved mental health and well-being. 
and also a greater connection to community and social supports through social prescribing link work support around maternity and maternal mental health. But we also see a range of secondary outcomes. So we see that women are building more supportive routines for them as a new family. So I'm thinking about a mum we worked with recently who had older children at school and a new baby and was facing a lot of anxiety and stress around leaving the house um, as a family with a new baby, getting the older children to school on time was something that she was feeling very anxious about. So there the role of the link worker was really about being by her side to start to develop new routines as a new family. How could they make things easier in the morning, maybe prepare things the evening before to make that morning trip to the school to do the school run, um, run more smoothly for them as a family. So there's some of the really practical things that the link workers support with. We also see reduced loneliness and isolation. Women tell us that they experience feeling heard and they also have been able to access some advocacy and some health literacy, health literacy support through the link worker. We see women telling us that they have improved social contacts. We see improved relationships partners and with the wider family, improved bonding with infants, increased patient activation and engagement with clinical support. So one of the things that we've heard from clinicians is that because the link worker is able to work through with the mum so many of those practical and emotional and social support needs that when women do come in for clinical support through talking therapies or um, the more specialist perinatal mental health support, they're better able to engage with that support because some of those practical challenges have been dealt with through the link work support. Women also report increased confidence and then that really feeds into them starting to make progress around employment and education too. Next slide, please. The two areas that women highlight when we start working with them as feeling that things are not OK will tend to be perhaps unsurprisingly around their mental and emotional health and also their support network. 96% of women have made progress in at least one outcome area and 87% across at least two areas and 54% across at least three areas. So we see that through the link worker support, women are starting to see a real benefit across those mother and baby outcome star areas around better relationships with family, better experience of bonding with their infant. Um, quite often some really supportive and sustained outcomes around financial support. So being better able to have access to all of the things that they're entitled to. And then on average, we work with a, a range of, of measures called four here in the UK and we see improvement across all four areas. I think the thing that I really wanted to highlight is that particularly women report a reduction in anxiety. So we see a fall in women's anxiety scores from an average of eight out of 10 to a score of five. And we have a quote here from a mum supported by the service who was having regular intrusive thoughts around the health of her baby, reporting being better able to balance unhelpful and intrusive thoughts, a reduction in attention GP surgeries and a reduction in online symptom research. So we can see some real benefits there for the service too. Next slide, please. The benefits of what works in terms of voluntary and community sector support, we've talked about some of these things already, but I think it's really important to highlight the assertive, which you know we are able to with women who are experiencing really complex social factors. It's a flexible and a responsive service. So we can offer support to women while they wait for support from clinical services. So while they're on the waiting list for talking therapies, for example, we can be, um, and that's something the link workers often describe as a handhold during that time to be really supportive and supporting mums to, to wait well. It's about building trust with women who experience complex social factors. A number of the women that we work with mistrust of services or fear of statutory interventions and I think those trusted relationships can really help with take up of early help so women report better conversations with social care we're also starting to see findings around an uptake of family hub support in our signposting and referral data and I think the thing that we would really highlight there is that women who are quite worried about coming to attention of children's services 
tell us they feel better able to speak up about their needs because the link workers are independent and they're based in the community and not in statutory services. Clinicians tell us that they benefit from greater exposure to community assets, that women are more empowered to share more and better able to engage because their practical and emotional needs are being met. And we've also been able to get some new peer support groups off the ground quickly and leverage additional resources. Next. Just wanted to touch on some of the NHS and workforce and education indicators the, you know, the theme around um, virtual international day of the midwife around sustainability is, is really important and sort of runs like a golden thread through this work. That's been about addressing sustainability and accessibility in our rural and remote communities. We've started to really build our understanding of isolation in rural and remote communities. Uh, one of the things that we offer through the link work services is, is telephone support to be able to so that women in those communities are able to access support when they don't have sustainable Wi-Fi connection, for example. It's been about developing sustainable community support network, exploring support needs of younger mothers, for example, increasing sustainability and maximising effectiveness through reducing duplication through cross sector working. And where we've developed new peer support groups, those opportunities for parents to meet in green spaces, to be out together for a buggy walk or a community walk has been something that women have told us they've really benefited from and that their children really benefit from being nature too. And also developing those eco-friendly and accessible digital resources and supports and really supporting around increasing digital inclusion. Next slide, please. Just going to very briefly share some feedback from professionals. So we have a quote here from the head of midwifery in the middle. This is a gaping chasm gap. Women who need that bit of extra support who've had issues pre-pregnancy that are often exacerbated and midwives don't have the capacity. Or I think the time is something that we hear a lot to be able to deliver that one-to-one -one or group working that's required. Next slide, please. And then some feedback from mums. You don't think how much having no hot water or being late dropping your child off at school can really get on top of you. It was all mounting up. I think if I hadn't addressed these things, everything would have gotten bigger and it would get harder. Helping me to nip things in the bud has made such an enormous mental health isn't always about being rock bottom. It's about stopping it from getting to that. So really preventative work here. Next slide, please. Then finally, I've shared some examples today of how we've been growing a bigger support network around families through building new peer supports. I think that the project has also been able to support a range of academic studies. So that was something that I wanted to highlight here, where we've really supported mums who perhaps wouldn't traditionally ex um, get involved in research and to engage in research projects around maternal mental health. So this slide really represents a, a range of partnerships that we've been able to develop um, with the voluntary sector and then being able to really support a range of academic projects and a range of projects in the community, working with mums with diverse experiences to hear their stories. Next slide, please. So that concludes my talk for today. Thank you very much for inviting me to speak with you. I've shared some contact details on the screen there. If there's anything that we've shared today that you would like to follow up with either myself or Rachel, please feel free to email us. And also um, Ways to Wellness have a, a Twitter or an X uh, handle that I've shared on the screen there too. We'd really welcome a conversation with you around the work. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Ang, for the great presentation. So I'm